They're coming for everything that makes you happy. They're coming for everything that gives you joy and satisfaction and connection and pride and community. And uh, yeah, they're coming for your sports teams. They're coming for your movies. They're coming for your music. Uh, the joyless people, the joyless brigade of happiness eating zombies are coming and they're not going to stop until you push back. They're trying to spread misery. You know that old phrase, misery loves company. There's a profoundly unhappy, discontented, neurotic people. And they kind of want to spread that mindset. And they do that by making you feel terrible for everything that you might potentially enjoy until you have nothing left to defend and they can take over. Joining us for the rest of the hour, Stefan Molyneux with his new book out, The Art of the Argument, theartoftheargument.com. And, and, and we'll get into the DREAM Act and his Trump going sideways in the second part of the interview. I want to get directly, obviously, as he does, uh, into the strategic genius of what Trump's done. Oh, you for the third year, you want to bitch and complain and hijack sporting events and take them over in your pity party when you're these you know, guys worth hundreds of millions of dollars and all the rest of it. He knows everybody's done with celebrity. He's always been the blue collar billionaire. He knows this is the time to make his move. So he invokes them to attack him to show just how clear this attack on America is and it's now being called the suicide of the NFL. They're now apologizing. They're now backing off. They're now hiring PR experts. They don't know what to do. So Stefan Molyneux, uh, I mean, this just looks like pure victory to me. What do you think? Well, they're coming for everything that you love. They're coming for everything that makes you happy. They're coming for everything that gives you joy and satisfaction and connection and pride and community. And uh, yeah, they're coming for your sports teams. They're coming for your movies. They're coming for your music. Uh, the joyless people, the joyless brigade of happiness eating zombies are coming and they're not going to stop until you push back. They're trying to spread misery. You know that old phrase, misery loves company. There's a profoundly unhappy, discontented, neurotic people. And they kind of want to spread that mindset. And they do that by making you feel terrible for everything that you might potentially enjoy until you have nothing left to defend and they can take over. Beautifully crystallized like only Stefan Molyneux can do. So as the, sh as the shrillness and the drumbeat goes to fever pitch, ramming speed, when they've already turned it up to 11, where do they go next? Well, I mean, they will continue uh, as they did in Soviet Russia, as they're doing in South Africa. They will continue to erase your history. They will continue to strip down everything that you love and that makes you proud of, of where you came from. Oh, do you like Shakespeare? Sorry, just an old white racist dude. Oh, do you like Dickens? Do you like Beethoven? Do you like John Locke? No, no, no. They were hidebound. They supported this, that, or the other. It was all imperialism and evil and nastiness and terror. I mean, it's just natural. This is the corrosive effect that this kind of rampant hostility has towards a particular culture. You know, other cultures, other worldviews are always trying to storm the ramparts of the West, of the good. Uh, and uh, it is a terrible thing to, to see. And unfortunately, we just have to pick up the cultural weapons uh, and, and fight back. Why not just adopt the best parts of the West and the best parts of the East like Japan's done? I mean, I mean, why not just 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 uh, adopt? Because the West is is about adopting whatever works, whatever is prosperous. Why why is there a war against that? Well, I hate to say it, Alex, but it's it's sadly true. There's a war against it because we pay people to do it. You know, whatever you subsidize, you're going to get more of. And if race baiting, gender baiting, hostility, and rage and contempt and aggression and action against the society gets paid. Well, then, you know, if you get a riot, oh, look, let's spend more on welfare. Let's open up a youth center. Let's settle with people who've done egregious things with multi-million dollar lawsuits and so on. So you keep paying for stuff. The more that you pay people who whine and rage and complain, the more of those people you're going to get. And at some point, the vending machine of white guilt has got to run dry. You know, if you keep pounding uh, white people with racist, sexist and so on, and we keep coughing up resources to make this pounding go away, we're just going to get more and more of it. That's right. We've been paying the pirates so long. The pirates now eating the NFL. It's it's a giant trillion pound spoiled rotten baby crapping all over us. Stefan Molyneux, the one the only is our guest. He has a new book out, The Art of the Argument. You can find the book at artoftheargument.com. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Stefan, the globalist, it's in the WikiLeaks, want social conflict. They want to guilt everybody into accepting their agenda. Not real free stuff in the long run for the masses, 
but the backlash is so giant, how do you expect them to counter strike and what else is on your radar? The counter strike is, uh, of course, the attempt to get uh, the amnesty through, right? The DACA amnesty through. That is the uh, counter strike. And I think that they're working feverishly over time through the GOP uh, and through other avenues, uh, through the media, to try and get the amnesty as much uh, as possible. And of course, this is going to be a true test of the future of the republic, whether there's going to be a future of the republic or not. Uh, there's v it's very clear that uh, the researchers in people in Mexico have an average IQ in the 80s. It doesn't change. You're importing a permanent uh, underclass on average of people who are going to consistently vote for bigger and bigger government, which is why Americans did give Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt and said, OK, he's not a politician. You know, he's not got much experience, but he sure is talking about building a wall and controlling illegal immigration and possibly even getting rid of deporting or encouraging the self-deportation of the tens of millions of illegal immigrants in the United States. So people said, OK, I'm going to get involved. I did. I was not involved in politics for like 10 years of my public life. I'm like, OK, this is an important enough issue. And now, of course, now the best you can hope for is that the rejection of amnesty seems to be the best you can hope for as opposed to an end uh, to DACA and the self-deportation or deportation of people in America illegally. And so this is one of these moments people have to make their calls. They have to put their friendships on the line. They have to make the case. They have to call their congressman. They have to reject, as we saw with Luther Strange recently, they have to reject even the possibility of amnesty or they're going to lose the republic as sure as the sun is going to rise tomorrow. Well, I think a lot of it's political. It's the brainwashing of the populations that are brought in and how the schools are designed to never even have basic nutrition. Uh, just even CNN just admitted last week massive IQ reductions uh, with fluoridated water. So, so much of this is coming out. I mean, I know you get into more just the ineptitude of the elites, and I tend to agree to that, but they also kind of have an overarching plan where they admittedly say, we're going to use diet, injections, injunctions, Bertrand Russell said that we're going to use fluoride to dumb people down. And, and, and I know it sounds crazy, but they've done that. Well, and there are other things as well, of course. Uh, if you hit your children, it reduces their intelligence. If you don't breastfeed for the recommended sort of 12 to 18 months, it, it reduces uh, intelligence IQ points. And nobody knows how to recover it afterwards. So there is a war on the minds of children. And uh, this needs to be reversed as well. This is one of the reasons I talk a lot about parenting and positive parenting practices in my show, because the children, of course, are the future of freedom. But again, right now, I mean, all of that stuff's going to show up in a generation. By the way, let's talk about that. I mean, 100 years ago, they said we want assembly lines, women in work, formula for babies. They knew it was wrecking them. They knew it was creating basically soulless people to a certain extent. Uh, and it's so sad. What do people do in an economy set up? where you're, you cannot hardly survive and have kids unless you warehouse them. Well, of course, throughout most of our evolution, Alex, we survived on three berries and a rabbit leg a day. You know, so the idea that exactly. in they've economy, built it you can't where possibly... they, they've built all these expenses in artificially. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a giant house. You know, I'd rather live in a trailer and, and be home with my daughter than live in a mansion uh, and ship her off to some place. You know, the, the, the goal of the state has been for many years to separate parents from their newborns. Because, of course, you know, we're kind of like ducks in a way. We bond to whoever raises us. And if we're raised by the state, then we're going to bond with the state. We're going to view the state as not just a substitute parent, but a primary parent. And our actual parents is kind of like babysitters. So if they can get you to hand over your babies to the state, if they can get you, oh, put them in daycare, go back to work after six weeks or eight weeks, don't worry. Uh, people, interchangeable people will just be able to take care of them. They're just completely interchangeable relative to you as a mother or a father. Then you're going to get a kid who ends up bonding with the state. And then when the state says, oh, we're going to take care of you, we're going to, people will say, well, what do I want my freedoms for? I've got a lovely nanny state here that's going to take care of me. Women marry it for welfare. Uh, kids marry it for pseudo education. Minorities marry it often for a bigger government. And there are those of us out there saying the state is not your friend. The state is a devil with a friendly mask, but the mask is coming off very quickly. Look at Venezuela. How many times does socialism have to end in a giant disaster for people to I mean, they're always saying, I want to be like Cuba where the health care is free. They don't have any type of real health care in Cuba. People come here from all over the world to get it. And we have problems, but it's just this. We, we want communism. It's like this West Point Army grad. We're going to come back and talk about that with Stefan Molyneux and get into a bunch of other subjects. What does the victory of Roy Moore against the Republican establishment signify that's big. Uh, we'll also look at what, where he thinks Mueller's going and other big issues. But like Molyneux said, the designed attack to end the human community, to break up the family, is 
the greatest scientific evil of our age. And it's on purpose by the robber baron super elite. We'll be right back. Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. If you're interested in healthy thyroid, if you're interested in well-being, if you're interested in having a higher IQ, which this has been linked to, get your powerful Survival Shield X2 at InfoWarsStore.com.